I must hear it every single day with virtually every single pupil who comes that they don't allow themselves to move. I've got to keep my head still, got to keep my left arm straight, got to stay over the ball, got to rotate, but not over rotate, can't sway, move off the ball, don't want to hang back, don't want to early release, got to try and hold the lag, keep the wrist firm, focus on hitting the back of the ball, the inside of the ball. All these thoughts are constraints. And if, like me, you've gone through this process, or maybe even still, are going through this process every time you hit a golf ball then maybe you're not even giving yourself permission to use your body to its full potential because the mental constraints are physically limiting your movement potential that capability that you've got is literally being constrained so tightly because you're not giving yourself license to actually utilize it so in essence we've got this skill set that we're not actually applying we're debilitating ourselves so when you pick up the golf club we're essentially crippled because we're now not actually using our body parts and we don't compromise ourselves in any other form of our lives using this process. We don't deny ourselves the opportunity to use our movement, we actually just move with intention and we allow ourselves to react. And we do that in every other sport, we do that in every other form of our life, so why are we not doing it in golf? Maybe it's the YouTube videos, maybe it's the information, the magazines, the lessons we've had where we've been told we're doing something wrong and the golf club becomes something that's almost feared and the golf ball as well because we're not actually using it naturally we're thinking about it so much and how many times have you heard don't do this, don't do that but actually maybe the intent of not making a mistake is the root cause of why we make all these mistakes we can't move with freedom unless we allow self-organisation to take place and that is not looking at a mirror and checking the swing. That is not matching the position. That is not talking to yourself with three or four swing thoughts and deliberately positioning yourself or moving the body in a particular way in space. It's allowing yourself to explore and react to the natural constraints that this task is affording you. If I want to throw a ball over there, I'm going to have to move in a certain way that's going to allow me to release the ball in that direction. Of course, this is learned. And so we've got to think about how we learn this process. And it's not by thinking how we move. It's by recognizing how we move, but it's exploring initially the options. What is this golf shot offering me in terms of movement? What's this golf club offering me in terms of movement? And what is my movement capability that I possess to move this? And now we can start to actually action this thing and action our potential. Let's have a look at how we can move because you're probably constraining your movement already. And then we're going to talk about three-dimensional movement. For example, if we use these sticks, often what we're sensing isn't actually happening in reality. So we're just adding more distortion now. The noise is ramping up and we're just starting to lose sense of what we're doing. So for example, if I want to go up and down, what is perceived to be a big movement here, because these joint actions look huge when we start to flex and extend. But in reality, I'm not really moving up and down that much. But this looks a big movement. But in reality, I've got to work a lot here to move in a couple of inches. And if I'm not affording myself this kind of movement because I perceive it to be too great, this to be too much, this to be too much, I'm starting to essentially close the walls in on myself. I'll be okay at swinging in a telephone box, but I'm not going to be able to hit a drive out of my shadow. And I'm not going to be able to start shaping the ball because I'm not allowing myself to swing the club into the space that I need to because I'm not moving using the space. Let's remove those constraints. So first of all, let's allow ourselves to move. Cut yourself a tennis ball in two. You've seen this numerous times, I'm sure, in my videos. Find a powerful stance width. And by that, what I mean is if you're going to create a dynamic movement, like say jumping, if you're going to jump off the floor, there's going to be a stance width you're going to use that's going to give you that ability to create a lot of force. If you go too wide, that's going to restrict. Too narrow, same thing. It's kind of, there's going to be a stance width that's going to feel comfortable. Using these tennis balls under the balls of the feet, specifically the part of the footprint you feel you would push the ground from to push yourself up in the air. That's where we want these. Taking the club, because that's what we're going to be using, and just swinging it. And when you swing it, do you feel anything? Or should I say, what do you feel? You're going to feel something. What do you feel? Now, if there's not a lot going on, we're probably not moving much. This is a real important stimulus for us to recognise what's going on. What I want you to do now is I want you to just squash the balls, but do them alternately. 
Okay, now that's one way of squashing the ball. Another way is to actually start to move the body and start to flex and extend. So now I'm moving from side to side, flexing one leg, extending the other. What you might notice is, yeah, you can go side to side and you can start to rotate as well. So there's a, an up and down feeling to this. Let the upper body now react and move up and down with the lower body. And allow yourself to rotate. So I'm going down and then up to rotate. Down and up to rotate. So I'm just exploring this space, because this is space that's going to be available for you to swing the club in. So we're just moving from side to side. With a club in your hand, notice how effortless it is to actually swing the club using this momentum you're creating. So I'm just using my trail hand and just allowing myself to load and unload essentially. That's what we're doing. We're just loading into the ground and unloading and we're rotating. This may feel like a wild movement. As soon as we put the other hand on now, we've got the lead on, we've got both hands on. Now we can start to explore it. And then we can step off the tennis balls. And you can hear the swish, you can hear the speed, I can feel the speed. And all I'm really doing is allow myself to rotate, allow myself to go up and down, and everything else is just happening. All these tilts, these side bends, the wrist cock, everything else is happening. So we're starting to create what essentially are the foundations of a golf swing. This is happening organically. We're not constraining this using our analytical mind. We're actually using our creative mind, recognizing the cornerstones of our movement. So for here, we've got rotation, we've got up and down, we've got an arc, we've got freedom, we've got range of motion, but it's the arc. What, is, what are you doing with the golf club? How is this club reacting? This essentially is a very important form of reference because you can sense it around the body. We can feel it now. If I want to play a draw, we can swing to the right. If I want to play a fade, swing to the left, because we know, like any other bat and ball sport, if we go this way, it's going to encourage a face that rotates and it's going to encourage right to left spin as a right-hander. This way, left to right. So we're already starting to build some form of, if you like, model, but it's our own model. And this is a very different space that I'm moving into now for a fade as opposed to a draw. But it's unrestricted. So from this place now of this exploration, we can start to refine this a little bit. We can start to think about, well, how does this apply specifically to certain shots or the intention of striking a golf ball? We know we've got to strike the golf ball with the center of the club face on the way down. The orientation of the club at impact is gonna, it's gonna look like this to some degree. And it's gonna be doing this. It's going to be releasing. Look where the handle is in relation to the club head. It's forward, okay? Because if this is back here, we're adding loft, we're probably going to catch it off the bottom of the club. We're not really using the club the way it's designed. We need to be striking it like this, which means the low point of this arc is actually forward of the ball. So what's it like now to recognize the low point and actually sense that ball turf contact? What's the sound of it? What's the feel of it? How do I recognize myself in space movement wise and just positionally relative to the golf ball because that's important at what part of this action am I going to recognize striking the golf ball and finishing my swing because I've got to be able to simulate this thing to be able to perform it with freedom without any inhibition I've got to let myself go so the simulation is so important a recognition of the whole simulation so a great exercise for us now is to take our stance I'd use the tennis ball, so for me left foot, take your stance where the ball would be and now move your trail foot across behind your lead foot or to the side so it's a, it's a small split stance but keep the club there where the ball would be. So now we've got a sense of where we would be in relation to this strike point with the ball and where the divot would be and how that would feel and how we're going to move to enable this to happen. We're going to be using vertical force. We're going to be going up. And the club can now release down. But look, it's in front of the golf ball. The low point's going to be well in front of the ball. This is now striking the ball the way the club has been designed, but with intention that is directly related to the performance. So now we're starting to feel the release point. We're starting to feel 
when this thing actually accelerates and where these forces take us. So where does this release now take us? Now we've got the sense for this, we can bring the trail foot back in and we can feel the whole action and where it takes us. Where does this vertical element take the finish? So now we're starting to feel how we not only create these forces but transfer them and what motion emerges from this and where that motion takes us to and that becomes the finish of the golf swing. Then we can take that away and now sense that with the ground. And we're starting to attune ourselves to the feel of impact, the swinging of the club, the timing of it and this is what we're going to take to these golf balls. We're taking a swing now with the intention of a golf shot. We're taking the swing to the golf course, we're taking the swing to the practice ground and we're going to refine it now through practice, through feedback of the golf shot. We've talked many times about face and path and using the ball flight as a, a form of feedback so you can use previous videos to help you with your practice and explore more of your potential and refine that action time and time again so every time you go to the range you're getting better. So let's remove those constraints. Let's give ourselves a license to move and let's get back to being happy golfers. Thank you.